The interpretation of breast biopsy, a procedure performed more than 1.6 million times in the United States per year, is of critical importance because these diagnoses drive treatment. But an article appearing in the Journal of the American Medical Association by Joanne Elmore and colleagues will no doubt cause concern among women who have had a breast biopsy and the physicians who care for them. Full disclosure, my wife is a breast surgical oncologist. Now, breast pathology exists along a spectrum, ranging from benign disease to invasive cancer. Along the way, you have multiple intermediate diagnoses that can be hard to make, including atypical cells and ductal carcinoma in situ. But these diagnoses are critical. For example, a diagnosis of atypical cells will often result in excision and hormonal therapy, whereas DCIS would add radiation therapy to the mix. Joanne Elmore and colleagues sent out slide sets to 115 breast pathologists across eight states and asked them to look at a slide and make a diagnosis. The question was, how accurate would they be compared to an expert consensus panel? And the answer, 75%. Now, what's interesting about this is that the expert consensus panel only agreed with each other 75% of the time, at least before they had a chance to talk about it in conference. Now these are somewhat disturbing results. Women hearing about a 75% accuracy rate might not be put at ease when they receive a benign diagnosis. But here's the important thing. This is not the real world accuracy rate due to the way the study was designed. In the real world, more than 80% of breast biopsies are benign, but in the study, the authors dramatically oversampled the middle diagnoses, DCIS and atypical cells, which would have the effect of dragging down the overall accuracy rate. In addition, in the real world, a breast pathologist doesn't look at a single slide. They can look at multiple slides and multiple stains. If they're uncertain, they can consult with a colleague. And of course, they can tell the ordering physician that they don't feel certain, and he or she can then communicate that to the patient. The bottom line here is that this study was designed quite pessimistically. While none of us will be happy until the accuracy rate is 100%, we certainly should not be quoting a 75% accuracy rate to our patients. The data just doesn't support that. Now, better molecular markers will no doubt improve accuracy over time. But in the meantime, I think we can offer the same piece of advice to women and to breast pathologists. When you're confronted with a diagnosis that makes you uncertain, the best advice is to phone another doctor. For MedPage Today, I'm Perry Wilson.